me the thing! Welcome back to Featured Fan Builds. We're going to be looking at another whole pile of blasters sent to me by various fans or pictures that they've sent me along with their stories. But I really like it when I actually have ones in my shop that I can show off. And the one that we're going to be showing off today was actually built here. Which, many of you have seen my Tommy gun, and I went with the civilian model with the foregrip and the longer barrel and, and all of that because I'm an Italian and we liked our street sweepers. Uh, but, a friend of mine, Brandon, decided to build his own version based off mine, but he did what a lot of you told me I should do. He built the M1 version, the, the military style one from World War uh, II, which his came out beautiful. He actually made the front part in wood, cut it out, sanded it, spent forever in the corner filing. It was actually in one of my videos. You could hear him filing away in the background while I was doing my video. And then as soon as I got done with the video, I went, hey, would you like to use the belt sander? <laughs> and he about threw the thing at me, uh, <laughs> which is fair. Um, but other than that, it's got, uh, what motors did you put in here? The Krakens. It's got Krakens, which, God, they're pretty sounding. He does need to switch to LiPo, so I'm gonna print him an extended battery door. I need to switch out the filament or I'd already have it printed by now. Um, he did a weathered paint job using, did you say Vaseline? No, yeah, I did, I did chrome first, and then yeah, I so he, it with Vaseline cool. in the corners, or the edges, and then after that, I waited for that to dry a little bit, and then painted it black. Yeah, yeah, and then the, the parts that had the Vaseline just smeared right off, which mm -hmm. came out looking well and thoroughly beat up, which I think, I think it's a much more, um, I don't want to say honest, but realistic weathering compared to dry brushing. Right. Because you actually have removed the outer coat down to the underlying coat, um, which I've considered doing with, like, you know, yeah, doing a silver and then, you know, uh, clear coating the hell out of that and then doing black over that so that the black will wear off, but the silver underneath won't. And so you'll get a natural weathering coat, which is what you've done, but an accelerated way of getting around yeah, it. So it came really out looking fast. gorgeous. He also did a, uh, a twine. twine wrap on the faux wrap that you have on the um, Slingfire's stock, which I think looks much nicer than the, the fake wrap. I may have to do something. Oh, I just painted over mine. But, uh, yeah. I got plenty of twine. I'll yep, yep. Next time. And then he's got the extended uh, mag release that Foam Blast has, as well as, I think this is Boba Lobo's rev trigger design uh, that I printed out for him. So, yeah. Now, one thing we have discussed is the option to go full auto, because this is only semi-auto at the moment, um, and possibly convert it for Katana Max, because I have both yes. the kits for that. I can print the, th the full auto kit, and I can print the half dart conversion kit, uh, because this really should be half dart, because mm -hmm. it should be firing 45 ACP, uh, because that's what the Tommy gun fired. So that would look pretty cool. I really like the, for the, the actual wood hardware. Even that the just, clamp in the front, I heated it with a torch so it would look yeah, all yeah. burnt. Got a little bit, yeah, the, the dull look so it doesn't yep. reflect as much light. Very, very cool. I like that. Most excellent, sir. We're going to have to make this thing a little bit more powerful. Needs the lipo, needs the full auto kit, possibly half darts. I don't know what, how, I don't honestly have any idea how well half darts perform in um, flywheel. I hear it's not as good, but we'll that's kind out. of a relative term. But yeah, if nothing else, we can convert it back. Nothing we do is permanent here because it's nerf. All right. Thank you, Brandon. No that problem. is awesome. Now I don't have to build the M1 version <laughs> because I've shown off yours. Ha, 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 ha. All right. Next. Up next, we have an Elite Raven designed by Fat J. He created the foregrip and uh, rail shroud that you see here. Uh, I think it looks absolutely great. It's got the P90 kind of style foregrip, a little bit different than that. And then the uh, carry handle has been covered and because uh, some people don't like the design of the carry handle. And then he added the the muzzle on there, which has kind of a suppressor look to it, and kind of a carbon, carbon fiber uh, pattern on it. And I think it looks really, really nice. I think it's very well integrated, and the, the color matching is phenomenal. So well done there, Fat J. Next! Next we have a paint job by Stormtrooper745, and here are his words. I imagine this blaster being a one-shot sidearm for elite soldiers in a futuristic infantry and I think he definitely nailed that particular look it does have a very uh, futuristic feel about it with the white and the black and the red and uh, the the emblem that he's got on there which apparently was a stencil he got from his brother uh, and I think it came out looking really really nice I really like the look of the Falcon Fire so I, I may have to mod one up myself one of these days so well done Stormtrooper 745 they say that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and that's definitely how I've chosen to take this particular build by Grubba Gobarp. 
this is his attempt at making a similar blaster to Tear. Uh, it's a backpack-fed, uh, flywheel-powered rival blaster built into a Punisher. So very, very similar to um, Tear. It does not have all, near as many uh, features as Tear. Uh, it does appear to have uh, some form of PWM controlling either the rate of fire or the uh, speed of the flywheels. I'm not sure which. Uh, and it doesn't have, obviously, Tears Barrel or the Rocket Launcher or a lot of the other features. Um, and the backpack does not, it doesn't appear to be um, pressurized like Tears is. So uh, he has some issues with feeding that, but then, I mean, Tear had issues with feeding uh, up until the most recent iterations and is undergoing upgrades even now to improve that. So uh, hopefully he, he plans to add features along with uh, tier when I add features to that, so I don't know if he's going to add the rocket launcher or any of the other various additions that I've done, but uh, definitely an excellent early attempt. Definitely a, a, a low-budget attempt, he mentioned. You know, I had the advantage of being able to uh, bounce ideas off of and get uh, parts and, and specs and so forth from out of darts, um, so I had a, a leg up there, and this one's being built on a shoestring budget, and the fact that it works at all is absolutely incredible. So I look forward to seeing how this one improves in the future, so keep me posted. This thing designed by Gregory is quite possibly one of the coolest blasters I think I've ever seen. This is a fully automatic, magazine-fed, flywheel-powered Maverick with stock attachment point and top rail. I absolutely love this thing. Uh, it is, again, one of those super low-tech jank builds that we very much embrace up here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, our jank master, uh, John, is being deployed, so uh, getting additional you know, submissions like this that can remind me of the jank and, and keep me from getting too serious absolutely pleases me. Uh, he says the rate of fire isn't spectacular because it's... Um, made using, you know, other toy robot parts. But the fact that it works at all, again, just fantastic. Uh, and I like that he, he made it extra modular with the stock at passion point and the rail. I approve of this wholeheartedly. Well done, Gregory. Next, we have a painted long shot with light modifications done by Charles in Canada. And the long shot is just such a beautiful shell to work with. It's a shame it was less easy to modify, but uh, he obviously he's added a little bit onto the uh, end of the barrel and d done a bit of a paint job. I don't know if there were any internal modifications. Uh, he's also added what looks like the modulus bipod, uh, which looks beautiful on this blaster, and the paint job he did is absolutely gorgeous. So, well done, Charles. Next! The next item is an absolutely magnificent example of German engineering and silversmithing. This is a barrel cover for the rough cut, which is something the rough cut desperately needs. My one complaint about the rough cut is that the barrels are exposed, and if you put it into any kind of a, uh, a holster, the darts tend to get smashed, or when you go to pull the blaster out, the darts get pulled free. This is an absolutely gorgeous and s and functional solution to that. He has made his own brass barrel shrouds for it and then integrated it in with uh, no necessary modifications to the blaster itself. Now he has actually done some. He's added, I believe he said, six kilogram springs to it, uh, so uh, as well as the paint job. But yeah, just beautiful, beautiful work here by Captain Troll of Germany. This next item comes to us from Pork and Beans, Oli the Deceiver, and Louis the Merciless, and it is an example of the kind of genius that can only come from the mind of a child. The idea of taking two magazines and taping them together so that one points up and one points down so you can easily pull the magazine out, flip it over, and, and reload uh, is something that just about everybody does at some point in the Nerf career. Nerf even made it, uh, an attachment that allows you to attach two six-round magazines like that. In fact, I think you can do larger magazines, but then it starts getting really long. But what this <laughs> little genius has done is he's attached the magazines that way, but then put a gun on both <laughs> both magazines. So rather than taking the magazine out, flipping it over, and putting it into the original gun, he simply flips the whole things over and switches guns, which is brilliant. <laughs> I think it's brilliant anyway. Uh, it would also allow you to shoot behind you if you really needed to. Uh, but I think this little genius has a great career ahead of him in the nerf modding world, and I hope he carries on and uh, 
continues to come up with these sorts of wild and wacky solutions to problems. Well done, all of you. Next, we have a sling fire designed by Jake. Uh, in addition to having a very nice dark green paint job that I think came out very, very well. Dark, dark green and silver goes beautiful together. He's also replaced the faux wraps with real wraps and extended the barrel a little bit, adding some various parts from other blasters. And I think it came out looking really, really nice. So, well done, Jake. Next, we have a Rampage modification by Dark Magician. Uh, not a whole lot going on on the inside, but obviously it has a paint job. Could use a little more color for safety's sake. But um, he's altered the pump grip to be, rather than a, a vertical one, to be a regular shotgun style one, which I personally uh, prefer that. I can't tell exactly how he did it. There weren't a whole lot of details, but it looks like he's cut the handle down and then added something on it to make it a little bit more comfortable. And I think it came out really nice. I'm curious what's on the side there. Those look like cut down mega darts. Not sure what's going on there. Let us know, Dark Magician. What's the deal here? Also, well done. Next. The next build is a complicated and beautiful integration by Sturban, and I will let him describe it. This is my most recent build. It is a Strife Long Shot, Long Shot Front Gun Centurion Strong Arm integration. As far as the internals, it is running on 3S Turnergy Graphene Lipo, complete rewire with voltmeter, Neo Hellcat motors, canted metal flywheel cage, and metal flywheels. The strong arm has a drop cylinder mod and a 9 kilogram spring. I know you're probably curious about the charging handle on the left side of the blaster. Well, that can be pulled to engage slam fire for the strong arm. And that's just the neatest idea I've ever heard for an underslung revolver modification like this. People have been doing Mav shots since way back in the day, before you know strong arms even existed. The strong arm was obviously the improvement to that because it was slam fire. Um, this allows you to have it engaged or not as you prefer, and I think that's just a really cool idea. Plus the way he's integrated both the, the voltmeter and the power button and all of the, the shell work together is beautiful, and the paint job matches it just a gorgeous, gorgeous build. I approve wholeheartedly of this. So, and the the drop cylinder is also another thing I don't think I've ever seen uh, in a revolver, underslung revolver like this. It's, I'm sure it's been done, but I don't recall ever seeing one. So I really like how that has been done. So well done, Sturban. Up next we have Jacob's expanded plunger tube Retalicon, Crimson Retalicon. Uh, he took the the plunger tube and the bolt sled from a uh, prophecy upgrade kit and decided to put it into this and I think he did a beautiful job with both the internal integration as well as the external. Uh, he hasn't done any kind of a paint job to it because it's a crimson, why on earth would you do that? But I really like the pump grip kit that he has. In fact I'd like to know where it's from because I'd kind of like to get one of these myself because I like how it integrates with the original slide like that. I haven't seen any that do that and I really really like that. So. Um, Jacob, if you could uh, send me the link to that or let me know how I can get my hands on one, that would be fantastic and absolutely beautiful work on this. Next we have a build by Bull Tactical that is the kind of build that speaks to me on a spiritual level. This is a pump action Apollo but done with parts from a hardware store, similar to my pump action uh, Magnus and Pump Action Kronos builds. This is something that anybody could just go to the hardware store and for very little money be able to build this and it looks actually remarkably well and clearly functions very very well. Uh, the barrel is just ABS pipe that's been attached onto the end of the Apollo and then the priming handle are uh, shelving brackets that have been look like they've been wrapped in electrical tape to you know make it a little bit safer and to you know, make it black and then you know a couple of bolts very very simple very very functional easy to do uh, and very very inexpensive because a lot of the you know the, the 3d printed kits can get kind of expensive whereas this probably cost a couple of dollars so well done bull tactical he actually has a YouTube channel and the link will be down in the description so check that out Next we have a custom build by John from Stalwart Blaster Works. Link to his stuff will be down in the description as well. This is a Raider with an integrated Raider on the back, reversed and 
added on to create additional internal space as well as to create a stock. Uh, the internals are the impressive part, and here are his descriptions of it. The breech is a sealed breech made from an aluminum barrel tube from an orange Modworks kit. I used a variant of the classic brass breech consisting of a stock breech and the aluminum tube. I replaced the stock reverse plunger system of the Raider in favor of a long shot setup with an 8 kilogram spring. I modified the plunger rod by shortening it with a, to, into a floating plunger and made a custom catch housing using ABS sheet stock that I attached directly to the plunger tube effectively making a drop-in system that in theory could be used in any spring blaster with adequate room for the long shot assembly. I also extended the breech tube in order to connect to the plunger assembly on the breech itself. From the breech forward is all stock Raider internals. All locks have been removed except the one that holds the bolt sled forward when primed. Uh, the AR has also been removed. This was a commission build that was really hard to let go of. And I can understand why. The The internals on it are, are absolute genius. And then the paint job that he did, that metallic blue, is just gorgeous. I really want to learn to do that kind of that color scheme, but I want uh, to learn to do it in more of an orange, so I can do orange and black with that metallic sheen. So absolutely gorgeous work. Uh, by John from Stalwart Blasterworks. Check him out on Facebook. Link will be in the description. I really hope my friend John sees this video and sees this particular build because I think it will please him deeply. This is Mephiston's Failfire and it is a bullpup sidearm. He was doing an all bullpup loadout. He wanted a, a bullpup primary, a bullpup secondary, and then a bullpup sidearm. And this is what he ended up building. It's an ion fire uh, with a uh, strong arm handle and then a barrel extension uh, with some rail. And I, I just love it. I like the paint job. I hope all of his blasters matched, or you know, if they didn't, I hope there was some rhyme or reason to why not. But I really like this in concept, and I think John would, uh, would approve of it as well. Last but not least, and speaking of bullpups, we have Marcus's Savitar. It's obviously a Raven with some fairly significant internal upgrades. Let's take a look at them. It has 16 gauge wire, Omron 21 amp switches, 2S LiPo, uh, open flywheel project, 42 millimeter cages, fam re fang revamp motors, and white worker wheels. It then also has Biggs NZ crystal clear parts and white LEDs. Then custom vinyl logo from custom 3D Nerf and this gorgeous paint job. This is an absolutely beautiful build. All of it comes together nicely. The clear uh, parts as well as the white LEDs and the white paint job and the, the gray accents. Absolutely beautiful. You usually see people go with white and black, but he went with white and gray and it gives it an even more ghostly look and I just really like the way this one came out. So well done, Marcus. Once again, an absolutely amazing variety of blasters. I love how much... Uh, Once again, an absolutely amazing variety of blasters. I love the variation and all of the creative ideas and weird ideas and innovative ideas and absolutely beautiful executions of some of these. I, I love getting just looking at them all and seeing the pictures and getting ideas and all of that. So if you have a build that you would like to have featured, uh, send me an email. The email address is now captain.xavier.fanbuilds at gmail.com. Uh, please include the description of the blaster as well as it has any kind of a backstory or a name. And be sure to include what you would like me to call you because otherwise I'm just going to use your first name. So... That is how that can be done. Uh, the more pictures, the better. I probably won't use them all, but hopefully there'll be some good ones that I can put in there. And so um, the more the merrier. Send me stuff. I want to see it. It's awesome. You guys are cool. Thank you for watching. Welcome back to Ficker. It is a rave. Ah, balls.